Well, hopefully you'll be number one in this game because tonight's pot is $1,000. And in case you're just tuning in, I'm going to re-explain the rules for you. You're going to have 10 seconds to pick your answer and choose wisely because once you tap, there's no going back. If you miss one, you will no longer be eligible for the cash prize, but stay in the game because you can keep playing along, tapping along for fun and see how you do. So we just got a little bit warmed up in our last segment with the poll questions, but let's do another one, right? Let's do a practice question. Tell me, what's your favorite weather? Sunny day, rainy day, snowy day, or cloudy day? We're always the same and be pretty boring, right? That's why I love living in the Northeast. We have seasons, we do. Now, most of the time I want a sunny day. Got to get my tan on, wear that SPF. But a thunderstorm when you're going to bed, oh, or that first snow of the season, there is nothing like it. All right, let's see what you guys are tapping. Yeah, sunny day. Sunny days. That's why there's a song about it. That's why there's Here Comes the Sun. So many songs about it. All right, I agree. That was fun. We got to know each other a little bit better. But are you ready to do the real thing? I think we've given people enough time to get in here. It's time to trivia question one. The part of a candle that burns is known as the what? Wax, wick, base. The part of a candle that burns is known as the what? Wax, wick, base. Make like a candle and flicker. No, that doesn't work. Get lit. All right, so let me be clear. This is if you're burning the candle the right way, right? Sure, probably all parts of the candle are flammable if the fire's big enough. But I hope that you all aren't burning the candle at both ends, because it's only trivia after all. It's supposed to be fun. This is fun. Burn display, bees burn. Yes, get that right part of the candle though, right? You don't want to be burning the entire thing or, I don't know, your house, it's dangerous. This quiz isn't flammable though, so you're, you're safe, you're safe. All right, we're looking for wick here mostly. 79% of you got it. Let's blow out this question and head to Q2. Which of the following is not a suit in a standard deck of cards? Heart, ace, spade. Which of the following is not a suit in a standard deck of cards? Heart, ace, spade. My favorite suit? Pinstripe. Or maybe hound's tooth. Shark skin? Oh, I don't know. I can't decide. Someone pick for me. Or don't, I don't know, see it yourselves. Whatever you go with, make it the right answer, right? So that you can stay in the running for some money tonight. Now going running in a suit, not a good idea. Maybe uh, workout clothes for that one. In a traditional deck of cards, club, diamond, spade, and heart are the only suits you'll see these guys sporting. Ace is a type of card, 88% of you knew that. Let me deal you into question three. This U.S. state contains almost all of the country's top 20 highest peaks. Colorado, Alaska, California. This U.S. state contains almost all of the country's top 20 highest peaks. Colorado, Alaska, California. I mean, not that it's a contest, but this state is winning by a mile. Literally, a mile. Like, some of these mountains are over a mile high. I mean, I don't even want to run a mile, let alone do it vertically. I'll set this one out unless they're in one of these Venetian guys rowing a boat in the striped shirts and straw hats. Yeah, that's more my speed. Let's do that option. I hope you all picked the right option. It's Alaska, and it's got 17 out of the top 20 highest mountains in the good old U.S. of A. 90% of you keep on trekking into question four. Of the following, what type of fruit is usually used to make an old fashioned? Peach, watermelon, orange. Of the following, what type of fruit is usually used to make an old fashioned? Peach, watermelon, orange. Finish the question though. An old fashioned what? An old fashioned what? Also, why are we trying to go back with our ways? We need to forge ahead. I'll take a new fashion, please. 
Yeah, it's just um, Bitcoin and steamed oat milk, and oh my gosh, it is delicious. It's not a matter of if that catches, it is when. Now, while we wait for my drink order, we all pick the best fruit? Not too low hanging, is it? In an old fashioned, you'll tend to find bitters, bourbon, simple syrup, and a garnish of orange, and sometimes a cherry. I make a mean one. 89% of you got that, so let's throw this one back and move on to question five. Which of the following animals is incorrectly matched to its descriptor? Cat feline, cow ovine, snake serpentine. Which of the following animals is incorrectly matched to its descriptor? Cat feline, cow ovine, snake serpentine. Why is it feline, ovine, and serpentine? The English language truly makes no sense. We'll begin with a box and the plural is boxes, but the plural of ox should be oxen, not oxes. One fowl is a goose, but two are called geese, yet the plural of moose should never be meese. I mean, you see my point, right? But back to the animals at hand. A cow is a bovine or bovine. Yes, weirdly this one can be pronounced either way. Why language lords, why? Ugh, oh, an ovine is sheep. 91% of you got it, so let's herd you on to question six. The lead singer of the band to play the first post-pandemic concert at Madison Square Garden was also in what other rock band? Weezer, Nirvana, Pearl Jam. The lead singer of the band to play the first post-pandemic concert at Madison Square Garden was also in what other rock band? Weezer, Nirvana, Pearl Jam. This concert was booked at full capacity with no mask wearing. It's true, nature's healing. You did, however, have to show proof of vaccination with entry. And you know what I'm gonna say to that? Go get your vaccination. Really do it, it's safe and effective and we can rock out again with the fighters of uh, Foo. Yeah, the Foo fighters. I'm glad they're doing it because I hear Foo gets real messy. Lead singer Dave Grohl before fronting this act was the drummer for a little band called Nirvana. Quite a musical career right there, yeah. And quite a trivia career right here. 90% of you got that and it's just getting started. Let's do question seven. The author whose 2010 best-selling book that focused on decluttering to spark joy hails from this country, Korea, Japan, Australia. The author whose 2010 best-selling book that focused on decluttering to spark joy hails from this country, Korea, Japan, Australia. Oh, I've used this philosophy on everything. My partner's sweater, ugh, the opposite of sparking joy. It was taking joy from me. I threw it in the trash. Same with my mother-in-law. I mean, I couldn't trash her, but I definitely trash talked her. My old roommate's disgusting couch. I took one look at it when I moved in and I lit it on literal sparks. Highly recommend sparking things that are sparkless. So yeah, thank you Marie Kondo for that. She hails from Japan. Sugoi displays, 92% of you got that. Let's move on to question eight. Which of the following events most directly resulted in the creation of NATO? World War I, Mexican-American War, Soviet communist expansion. Which of the following events most directly resulted in the creation of NATO? World War I, Mexican-American War, Soviet communist expansion. The T in NATO does stand for treaty, which is a bit of a deceptive word, I will say. You know, when you first hear it, treaty, you think, oh, what's, what's for dessert? But then you find out it's usually just a bunch of legal jargon and boring agreement stuff. Not nearly as fun as tiramisu. Although what is, really? However, for what they lack in sugary goodness, treaties more than make up for in keeping global peace. Yeah, which was the aim of this organization when it formed in 1949, after the end of World War II and the expansion of the Soviet Union. Nice work, comrades. 86% of you got that. Q9. Who was the first celebrity cameo to die in the 2013 film starring Seth Rogen and James Franco? Rihanna, Michael Sarah, Mindy Kaling. Who was the first celebrity cameo to die in the 2013 film starring Seth Rogen and James Franco? 
Brianna, Michael Sarah, Mindy Kaling. You probably remember a few celebrities get sucked into a giant pit that opens up in the ground. That would be none other than the pit to hell, which does not give ACDC a run for their money with the highway to hell. Yeah, because the pit, you know, you just kind of fall into a highway. That is deliberate. You signed up for a high-speed chase to hell. You got ambition, kid. Keep at it. Hope everyone's still strapped in because we're not quite done yet. Now, Rihanna and Mindy Kaling do fall into the pit, but Michael Sarah actually dies before them, first by being impaled by a light post, but then by falling to the hell pit. Such a nice, talented young man. You hate to see it happen. No fall for 66% uh, of you today, though. And we're ascending the heights of the final question. Q10. The originators of the two-person board game that simulates warfare would have most likely spoken an antiquated version of what language? Russian, English, Hindi. The originators of the two-person board game that simulates warfare would have most likely spoken an antiquated version of what language? Russian, English, Hindi. If we learned anything from the Queen's Gambit, it's that it doesn't matter what language you speak to play this game as long as you have enough of those little green pills to hallucinate the game pieces on the ceiling as you fall asleep at night. Shouldn't you play a less exciting game if you're trying to fall asleep? Like Monopoly? That game never ends. Snooze fest, am I right? The game, if you know the reference, is chess. One which originated not in Russia or Europe, but actually in the Middle East and ancient India, where today, Hindi is spoken. And the quiz is spoken. Savage question on that last one. 24% of you got that. We have some winners. I was gonna say we have some winners, but we have some winners after that last one. How did you do, Displavies? I mean, today you came, you played, you slayed, and you got paid for the knowledge you displayed. A big thanks to Lauren Koenig for coming on the show tonight. Tomorrow, we've got a super special car show coming your way. Literally, I went to scope out some Ferraris over the weekend and have I got some fire hot, as in hot wheels, footage for you. Plenty of glamour shots of the cars and of me. Tons of interviews. We've also got more learning and earning, fresh display tips, fresh content by all of you, and of course, a fresh stack of cash for trivia. Woo woo, bravo. Oh no, Chico 99 FB, nine out of 10. Sandeep got a 10 out of 10. Cognac 311 says it's cognac time. Superfin, nine out of 10, so close. But yeah, so far, still didn't get it. That's all right. Yes, everyone's saying time for an old fashioned. The name of that question, go make yourselves an old fashioned with an orange peel. I'm Sarah Priebus, I'll catch you tomorrow on display. Performing exclusively on...